So today we are celebrating all the mamas out there. So happy Mother's Day to every one of you. And I want to say happy Mother's Day to my very own mother. I love you. I honor you. I know I've been, um, I've tested your patience a time or two in 46 years. And, um, but I do honor you and I love you so very much. Thank you. You've been one of my biggest fans and um, you've been an inspiration and encouragement to me. So I love you. Thank you. I want to give honor to my mother-in-law, Miss Marilyn Conway. Hey, I love you back there. Amen. You guys can clap for my mom and my mother-in-law. Amen. Amen. My mother in love right there. Amen. So thank you. Thank you for always um, showing what a godly woman example is like most of the time. I'll keep the little stuff to ourselves. How's that? Just kid. You know, you know, I love you. Thank you for, for raising my wife, the mother of my children, our children. So I give honor to you today. Thank you. And I love you very much. And Miss Heather, I love you. This is wave at everybody. Let her stand up. Let everybody see how beautiful you are. I want to give honor to my wife today, the mother of our children, my best friend. She's been my backbone and she's, she's been here with me and um, seen me in my ups and downs and times I've wanted to quit and throw in the towel. She's been there right next to me. So I honor you and I love you very much. And all the rest of your mothers in here, God bless you. I honor you. And uh, the Bible says, give honor where honor is due. So I give honor to all the moms out there. I give honor to all the moms on Facebook and YouTube. I love you. You all rock. The title of my sermon today is this, a mother's heritage. Somebody say a mother's heritage. A mother's heritage. Well, what is heritage? we got to find out the definition of heritage before we even know what a mother's heritage, heritage is. So heritage is this, a practice or a set of values that is passed down to the next generation. So in layman's terms, basically it's saying mothers are leaving a set of values to their children and to their grandchildren. All of you, moms and dads alike, but today is Mother's Day, so I'm going to be picking on the moms a little bit. But dads, don't worry. Wear your steel-toed boots on Father's Day because I'm going to be coming at you hard. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. But mamas, I want to encourage all of you today because all of you are leaving something behind, if you know it or not. All of you are leaving a heritage. All of you are leaving something good or something bad. All of you are leaving something positive or something negative. So you all have a choice to make today, moms. What are you leaving to your children, to your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren, and generations to come? A mother's heritage. So pay attention, moms and mothers-to-be. I'm talking to all of you in the house today. Maybe you're in this place today, and you're 13 or 14 or you're 17, and you're not a mom yet. Please pay attention to everything that I'm going to say today. Amen. Statistics show that a mother has more influence over her children than, her, than the father. Over 60% of American adults say that their mom has uh, impacted their life or influenced them growing up more than any other human being on planet Earth. And I can probably truly testify to that, that my mom has had more of an impact in my life than any other person on planet Earth. 60% of American adults are in agreement with that, that their mom has impacted them or influenced them growing up. Maybe because their moms were home with them. I don't know. Maybe it was God's design because we are in our mother's womb and there is an intimacy, a connection between a child and their mother. All I know is that Americans say that their mother had more of an influence on their life growing up than any Buddy else. With that said, catch the fire, church moms. What are you leaving your children? What are you leaving your children? Are you leaving a godly heritage? I just said a moment ago, you're leaving something. What is it? Are you leaving a godly heritage? Are you passing down godly principles to your children and to your grandchildren? Only you can answer that. Will there be Christian values and godly traits passed down to the next generation? Will your kids and grandkids know 
about our Father in heaven? Will they know about the name of Jesus Christ? Will they know about the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Is this, is this talked about in your home? Or do you talk about schoolwork or tumbling or volleyball or basketball or, or the Cardinals or the Cubs? or What is it that you talk about in your home? What are you leaving to your children and grandchildren? Are you leaving, truly leaving, a godly heritage? As a parent myself, I want to leave my kids something someday. I really do. And it's going to go beyond monetary money or uh, um, my, my inheritance of financial gain or anything that I've ever received financially. It's going to go way above that. Can I get an amen? It's way more important than monetary value. What I want to leave is more precious than gold or silver or finest of houses or the finest of land or the finest of cars. What I want to leave is the gospel of Jesus Christ that my kids and my grandkids know that Jesus Christ is Lord of all, that he is King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. I want my kids and grandkids filled with the spirit of the living God. I don't have grandkids yet. My kid, Connor's single and ready to mingle. Praise God. Kenzie's got a boyfriend, and I pray God, to God that it's going to be a little while before she gets married. Can I get an amen right now? Whew. But someday, someday, that's on Facebook, bro. All the single ladies, all the single. Listen. Someday, someday, I will be a granddad. I'm going to be the grand man. I'm going to be a grandpa someday. And I want my children's children to know about the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want them to climb up on my lap and I want to share something with them. I want to share the truth of the gospel that Jesus Christ was suspended between heaven and earth to bridge that gap between sinful man and a holy God. I want them to know the power of the name of Jesus. I want my children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren to know that there's power in that name. There's power in the blood and the blood washes and the blood cleanses and the blood sets the captives free. I want to know today, moms... I feel the anointing. I want to know today, moms, are you leaving a godly heritage to your children? Only you can answer that. What I'm talking about is leaving a heritage that imparts wisdom, anointing, and power. Did you hear that? I want to leave a heritage that imparts wisdom, anointing, and power. Mothers, you're more powerful than you realize. There's something powerful about a praying mom. Can I get an amen? There is something powerful about a praying mom. Pray for your children. Even if they're running wild and acting stupid and cr crazy and chaos is taking place in your home, keep praying for them. Don't give up on them. Keep loving them. Keep calling their name out before the throne of heaven. Set that godly example. Can I get a witness right now? Hallelujah. Because you're powerful. Lay hands on them. Moms and grandmas, when you walk by your grandchildren or your children, just lay your hand on their back and say, in the name of Jesus, you're powerful. Impart that wisdom. Impart that anointing. Impart that power from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 1, verse number 3 says this. Tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. I believe God is making it very clear that we're to pass the things of God on to the next generation. We are not, somebody say not. We are not to keep our wonderful experiences of Jesus Christ, the truth of the gospel, to ourselves. We are to share it to our children and to our grandchildren and to the generations to come. Hallelujah. I thought about this yesterday. I thank God Almighty for the generations that have gone on before us that weren't ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I thank God for over 2,000 years there's been moms and dads, but I'm talking to the moms today. There's been moms for over 2,000 years sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ because they are unashamed of the gospel. They know that it, there is power in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And because of these women throughout generations before us that weren't ashamed to share and tell, we are reaping the benefits today. 
Can I get an amen? How powerful is that? I was thinking about that, Pastor, yesterday. That because of the generations that's gone on and them not being ashamed of the gospel and sharing it with their children and then their children and their children and generation to come. 2,000 years later, here we are in Cowden, Illinois at Catch the Fire Church preaching the gospel. It's because there's been some moms along the way standing up for the righteousness of Christ. Moms, we need you. I want to encourage you today. Keep sharing the gospel. Keep praying. Keep preaching. Keep prophesying over your children. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that I'm blessed. I know my wife and children are blessed. Not just because of something we did. It's because of generations prior. Living for the Lord. Standing up for the righteousness of Christ. Being obedient to Scripture. Even when the world is telling the previous generations to bow down, they've stood firm. And that's what we're going to do in 2022. But I know my family and my children and someday my grandchildren will be blessed. Not only because of us living for Jesus. It's because of the generations in our family that's gone on before us. Granny Frida, perfect example. I preached about her before. She was filled with the Spirit for how many years? 76? 76 years. I remember sitting around her kitchen table, and she would tell stories about the circuit rider that came in. He come from California, came all the way, and rode in and preached in this little, it looked like a little house on a prairie. It was a school and a church all in one. And she, she said she remembers him preaching about the Holy Ghost. And she would dance, and she said she watched her sister Alma dance for hours in the Spirit. And people would be climbing up on each other, trying to look in the window because the church was so packed. I love that heritage that she's passed on. Amen. I remember being at Pastor Tommy Bates' church in Independence, Kentucky. And I was standing up by the pulpit next to Pastor Tommy. And he got Heather and Connor and McKenzie up there. And Pastor Tommy, after I give the microphone back, he started prophesying. And I remember him looking at you. And I remember him saying, I see a, an, an elderly woman. And he said, I believe it was your grandma. He, he started calling it out. And he said, the anointing that was upon her and the prayers that she prayed, you're going to, am I saying this right? You're going to reap the blessings because of that woman. And then he laid hands on Heather. Heather is, you know, Heather's real quiet and timid. Heather didn't go. Heather went, boom, just like laid out in the spirit right there. It was so awesome. It was powerful. People paid a price for the gospel. Mothers are you paying that price for your children to reap the blessings? Only you can answer that, honestly. You are the ones that wake up. I'm not in your home. I'm with my own wife. Praise God. You're in, you're in your own home. You know what it's like. Do you wake up? Will you wake up tomorrow morning with a praise in your mouth, thanking the Lord Jesus Christ? Will you wake up sharing the gospel to your children and grandchildren? Do your kids know the name of Jesus? Or is that just a slang word? Oh, gee, uh, let me tell you. I was talking to Connor the other day. I get really, 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 really irked when people use my Savior's name in vain as a slang word. You want to get me hot under the collar, walk around me and say, Jesus Christ, like that. Is the name Jesus Christ a slang word in your home when things aren't going right, moms? Or is the name of Jesus being proclaimed as the name that's above every other name in your home? Moms, please hear me. Your children are counting on you. Your children need you. 60% of Americans say that their mothers influence them more than any other person on planet Earth. Think about that. Are you speaking the name Jesus over your children? Whew. My God, my God. Wave at me, moms. How many of you mothers would love to pass on generational blessings to your children? Amen. Well, I was thinking about this, and I did a little research yesterday. This is so awesome. Because we talk about generational blessings, but there's something called generational curses as well. And remember, what a heritage is, it's leaving a set of values to the next generation. And I said it could be either good or bad. You can be leaving generational blessings or you'll be leaving generational curses. 
right? But generational curses go down to the third and fourth generation. But let me tell you what a godly heritage, when you leave generational blessings to your children, what it, let me just read this for you. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. That's generational curses, right? But look at verse number 10. But showing love, this is God speaking, but showing love to a thousand generations to keep those who love me and keep my commandments. Generational curses to the third and fourth generation. But godly mothers, listen to me. Godly heritage being passed down to thousands, generations to come. The blessing is greater than the curse. Come on, that ought to make somebody want to shout right now. The blessing is greater than the curse. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I really want to know, moms, are you ready to give that generational blessing to your children? It's entirely up to you. Entirely up to you. I can preach every Sunday till I'm blue in the face. We can sing songs for two hours, but it is completely up to you what you do with this. Do you have an intimate relationship with Jesus for yourself? It's quiet, but it's okay. Moms, it's time to leave a Godly heritage to your children. When Jesus was speaking in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, it's known as the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus in uh, Matthew chapter 5, he calls us the light of the world, a city that's set on a hill. He said, let your light shine before all men so they may uh, glorify our Father in heaven. And he says, we're not to let our lights be hid, but he said to let your light shine bright for all men to see, meaning we are to let our light shine bright from one generation to the next. Is your light shining bright to your children? I want my kids, I want your kids not just hearing stories of past miracles or past services or, boy, we had a good service in 1999. No, I want our kids to experience it today. Can I get an amen? I want my kids and your kids to experience the miracle working power of Jesus Christ today. And we as the parents should be teaching them the good things of God and passing the anointing on to that next generation. Is there bickering and fighting going on in your home? Is that all your kids see and hear? Or are they seeing and hearing the love of Jesus? It saddens me to say this, but I believe it true or I wouldn't say it. I believe that each generation that goes on before us is leaving less and less to us concerning the things of God. They're not transferring the anointing to that upcoming generation. I know I said a moment ago, thank God for 2,000 years of mothers. But if you look in history, each generation that goes on before us, World War II generation, they had a fear of God. That, that, that baby boomer, that, that Vietnam War era, era people, less. Then you get to my generation, less. You get to these kids' generation, less. What, what's happening? What's happening? We're not sharing about Jesus Christ to our children. And it saddens me to say that, but I believe it's time to change it. Moms, can I get an amen? So how do we do it? How do we change it? How do we get the next generation to embrace the things of God? Please hear me. Please hear me. We teach them from a very young age to see themselves as stewards, as managers of the things of God. Can I get an amen? Teach our children to operate and move in the power of the Holy Ghost. Teach them the importance of prayer. Teach them the importance of praise and worship. Not just at church, but even in your own home. Can I get an amen? 
Teach your children the importance of being a steward with money and show them that it's okay to tithe because it's in the word of God. And not only are you just, you're, you're, you're not just giving money, you are getting blessings from God because God himself says, I will rebuke the devourer for you. Teach your children of this. Moms, teach them. Have your kids run up. If they, if they mowed a yard and, and they made 10 bucks, have them throw a dollar in. Teach them godly principles. And I promise you, they will be blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need to talk about the services that we have here at Catch the Fire Church. Don't go home and talk about how Pastor Kyle is gaining weight and how Pastor Kyle spits and sweats and how, how, how well, the music wasn't this good and the preaching wasn't this good. And did you see that person? Did you see what they were? Don't, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about go home and lift up the service. Talk about how, how God's presence is here and talk about it with your children. Can I get an amen? Talk about how good God is and what he's done in your life. Don't talk negative all the time. If you speak negative all the time, you're going to get negative results. But if you speak positive, I like being around positive people, moms, because positive people get positive results. Speak life. Speak encouragement. Speak life over this church and our services. Can I get an amen? So when you go home today, get it with your children and talk about how awesome God is and what he's doing in your life and in your family and in this church. Hallelujah. Teach your kids not to worry about fame and fortune and popularity, but teach them about spiritual concepts. Speech, teach them about the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Some of you are looking at me because you don't even know what I'm talking about. It's in the Bible. Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit. There's nine of them. Love, joy, same with me. Peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. There's nine of them. And there's nine gifts of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. Amen. Share it with your kids. Psalm 119, 89 to 90. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness is to all generations. Psalm 145, verse 4. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. What kind of heritage are you leaving your children? You may be in here today and you may be believing and agreeing with everything that I'm saying. But you may be asking this one question. Pastor Kyle, I come to church. I do love the Lord. But how do I pass these blessings down to my kids and grandkids? Please hear me. If this is all you hear today, please hear me. If you are passionate about the Lord, your children will see this and get this in them. If you are passionate about your convictions, if you are passionate about the word of God, if you're passionate about praise and worship to the throne of heaven, your children will see this. And let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. If you've ever seen a fan, I'm going to talk about Cardinal fans, okay, because I'm a, we're Cardinal fans, right? Amen. We're not going to talk about Cubs today. We're going to talk about Cardinal fans, even though they got beat yesterday, but it's okay. But uh, I've, I've witnessed this myself, and I'm sure many of you are going to relate with this. I've been around families where they've had like a four, five, six, seven-year-old child, boy or girl, doesn't matter, the gender, and they, they're dolled up in their Cardinal stuff. And I've talked to them, and they're like, yeah, we're Cardinal fans. And they don't know anything about the Cardinals except their, what their mom and dad tells them about the Cardinals. Are you hearing me? But they're Cardinal fans. And then when they get 12 and 13, they're Cardinal fans. And when they get 17 and 18, they are Cardinal fans. And when they get 25, they're Cardinal fans. And they get 46, they're Cardinal fans. Why? 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 What? It was instilled in them. That was what was talked about at their home. We love the Cardinals. Let's cheer on the Cardinals. Same concept when it comes to church same concept when it comes to our lord and savior jesus christ 
What is being talked about in your home? Are you passionate about Jesus Christ? I don't know about anybody else, but I love him. I am unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want my kids, I want my grandkids to know about Jesus. Can I get an amen? Are you talking about Jesus to your children? Moms, if you have that question today and you're asking... I do love Jesus, and yes, I come to church, but how do I get it instilled in my children? Talk about him. Talk about him. Talk about him. Talk about how good he is. Amen? If they can see you glow and be passionate about some sports figure, don't get me started on that. Don't get me started on that, yeah. If you can do that, you can talk about Jesus Christ to your kids. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Our behavior has such an influence on the behavior of our children. Our behavior has such an influence on the behavior of of this next generation that's coming up behind us. And if we want to direct the behavior of the future generations, we must take a look at our own behavior. I have to look at my own behavior. Moms, you have to take a look at your own behavior. You've heard the phrase, they're just a product of their home. It's sad, but it's true. Most of the problems in schools, most of the problems in the world today, it's because we don't have God-fearing homes anymore. Jesus isn't talked about near enough. The Word of God isn't obeyed. The righteousness of Christ is not observed and lived. So moms, please hear me. Your children are watching you. I'm going to make a couple statements here. I wrote these down. I actually typed them on my phone yesterday. I took Heather to Cracker Barrel. And while we were there, just like the Lord just popped this in my spirit, and I wrote it down. Please hear me. What we do now affects the future. How we live today affects eternity. Not only for us, but for the generations to come. Let me say this again. These are boom words. What we do now affects the future. And how we live, I'm talking to moms and dads, but moms, please hear me. How we live today affects eternity, not only for us, but for the generations to come. Remember what I said earlier in this message. It's the mothers that have the most influence on their children. Moms. Please hear me. I'm not getting on you. I'm trying to encourage you. Your children are watching you. They're listening to you. They're watching every move you make. So let me break it down, catch the fire church style. Are you ready? If you talk the talk, you better walk the walk. Come on, can I get an amen? If you want your children not to smoke, drink, be promiscuous, and sleep around, and do drugs, and lie, and cheat, and steal, you better set the example and not smoke, drink, do drugs, lie, cheat, steal, sleep around. Can I get an amen right now? Our kids need to see ah uh, ah. Uh, our kids need to see us pray. If you're filled with the Spirit, your kids ought to know you're filled with the Spirit. Your kids ought to hear you pray in the Holy Ghost. They need to see us praise and worship. And some of you don't even do it here in the church house. So if you can't even lift your hands and worship with brothers and sisters in the Lord, I promise you, you ain't doing it at home. Oh, pastor's being mean.
I was going to tell a story, but I, I better not. I better not. I better not. Because I'll probably get in trouble. <laughs> Moms, your kids are watching you. Are they seeing you praise and worship at home? Are they, are they hearing you pray? Pray for them. Are they hearing you pray in tongues? There was a saying, and I've said this to, to the church before in past years. There was something I would say to Connor McKenzie when they were kids, when they were growing up almost every day. I would look at them, and I'd say, have you prayed in tongues today? I would ask you guys that all the time. You prayed in tongues today. Are your kids seeing you worship at home? Are they seeing you get in the word of God? Are you so glued to the TV? Because you got to watch your family. Oh, man. i got to watch my family. Most of our problems, moms, is time management. I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to read the word. Turn off the stupid TV. Oh, we don't say that here. Yeah, I do. Turn off the stupid TV and get in the Word. It's okay. You don't like that. That's all right. That's okay. <laughs> your kids need to hear you tell your spouse that you love them. Amen. Amen. Are you leaving a godly heritage? That's all I want to know. Are you leaving a godly heritage? So, Mom, what are you leaving your children? What are you leaving? If Brother RJ or Ashley would come up here, I'm closing the rest of you. If you would stand to your feet. Here in just a moment, I'm going to give an altar call. And this is to the moms and grandmas and great-grandmas in here today. I don't want you to feel beat down. I don't want you to think Pastor Kyle was really getting on you today. I just want to challenge you today. Because I gave you a statistic from Barna Group, and I trust Barna Group, and they said 60% of American adults say mothers influence them more than any other person in the world. Your kids are watching. So I want to encourage you today. Maybe you've messed up. We've all messed up and fall short of the glory of God. All of us. We've all messed up. You're going to have days. I have days. Heather's about as perfect as somebody can get, but she has days too. We all do if we're honest with ourselves. Right? So you might have got up this morning, and how many of you know Sunday mornings are chaotic? Anybody know that? Cha chaotic with kids, and you're running around, and you're trying to get, get dressed, hurry up, we're going to be late. Yeah, you might have messed up today. But listen, t tomorrow's a new day. Amen. And your kids, I cannot stress this enough. Your kids are counting on you let's pray father